Ahar, E-R-Y-T. Today I'm going to share with you a restorative yoga practice with meditation set to the theme of contentment. Today we will be very restorative. So I have with me uh, many props and I recommend you um, gather some props similar to these. Today I have um, two of my comfiest, fluffiest pillows. I actually have a blanket, two blocks, which you could easily use shoe boxes or even books, um, larger books, dictionaries and things like that. Um, I also have a giant bolster. So um, one last thing is just have some water. Today I'm drinking tea, but just have something to keep yourself hydrated throughout. We will have a very restorative yoga practice today. Um, fun fact about myself really quickly here. Um, I'm doing a major landscaping project and eagerly took on a lot more than I probably should have. So I'm going to be sharing with you some things in case you are similarly doing a lot of outdoor activities or, you know, taking on uh, more biking or things like that due to the warmer weather. Um, so hopefully these are great poses for you as well. So um, let's find these props, find some, some space in your house, lay out your yoga mat, and we'll come to a meditation. So. Our destination pose tonight is Supta Baddha Konasana, Bound Angle. And one of the benefits of Bound Angle is an open-heartedness. Um, when you recline in your Bound Angle, your shoulders are able to peel back, you naturally release uh, pectoral muscles and allow your heart to be open. So we'll kind of harness that same mentality in our meditation. So again, as we move into meditation here, find yourself sitting comfortably. Um, I'm, I chose a crossed leg pose. You can do a similar pose of your own, but more importantly, find yourself comfortable. So make any adjustments that you think you need to find comfort in the present moment. And once you're comfortable sitting on your mat, start to scan your body, close your eyes, attention to anything that presents itself in your present moment, the sensations that you have in your body, the population of thoughts that you have in your mind, even the depth of your breath. Just be aware of everything that you have in your present moment. attention back to your body, scanning your body, witness any areas that remain contracted, maybe this is some tension in your shoulders or tension in your jaw, be aware of these areas that have yet to relax or release, and use your breath to focus on those areas. Breathing as if you can breathe into your shoulders, breathe into your spine, breathing into your low back, breathe into your jaw. Letting the breath be the vehicle to allowing yourself to release and let go of stress and tension. Right now, you're still just using the natural flow of your breath, how you typically breathe throughout your entire day. Let's take another breath, and we'll start to practice the pranayama ujjayi breath. So now intentionally breathing by lifting the back area of the throat Sipping the breath in through the back of the throat, let the breath enter in the back of the throat all the way down into your diaphragm. Let the breath exhale as it moves from the diaphragm back out through the back of the throat and out through your nose. So allow there to be a hissing sound on your inhale and exhale, the hissing as you sip the breath in through the back of the throat and into your diaphragm and back, back out from the diaphragm through the back of the throat and up your nose. 
So this pranayama ujjayi breath triggers parasympathetic fibers in your lungs, and especially when you draw that breath deep into your diaphragm, that expansion of your diaphragm relaxes you using that parasympathetic expression. So we're using this pranayama ujjayi breath, sipping the breath in, pressing the breath back out. Following the breath as it moves into your diaphragm and back out of your diaphragm. And let's use the 2 1 breathing ratio to relax the body. So we're going to inhale for the count of three and exhale for the count of six. And you can count in your mind. And you can begin right now using the ujjayi breath, so we're inhaling, exhaling, inhale, exhale, continue using that 2-1 breathing ratio. Your exhales are twice as long as your inhales, and what this is doing is letting go of any excess carbon dioxide, naturally allowing you to fill your lungs with fresh oxygen. It lets go of, it allows you to let go of stress and tension and things that are holding you down, and then allows you to harness more energy, um, all while still using the parasympathetic expression to release energy or to release your stress and tension through your central nervous system. Inhaling using the 2-1 breathing ratio. Inhaling for three, exhaling for six. All right. Pay attention to the chitta vritti, the presentation in your mind. Be aware of any awarenesses, any thoughts, dreams, memories, whatever might populate into your mind. And let anything go. Let a lot of those things go because right now your focus is inward on you. And let's just create one contentment mantra. And it can be anything you think you need. Anything you think you need to hear. So an example might be Repeating to yourself inside your head, I am peaceful. You don't need to use that one. You can say, I am happy. I am relaxed. Find the mantra that is most custom fit to you and repeat that mantra in your mind. And let's take five more breaths. With every exhale, you repeat that mantra in your mind using the 2-1 breathing ratio and your pranayama ujjayi breath. Okay, let's open the eyes. Let's do a few gentle stretches just to start to move. So we're gonna inhale and sweep the arms up high. Exhale, just float the arms back down. And do that again. Inhale as your arms rise. Exhale, arms float back down. Let's inhale, arms rise again. This time, as you exhale, hinge at the elbows and come into angel wings or cactus arms. Take a deep inhale as you peel the shoulders back, reaching the elbows together behind you. And exhale as you bring the palms together in front of you. 
Inhale again, arms open. And exhale again, your palms touch. Maybe the elbows can touch. Inhale, arms open. And exhale again, palms touch. Let's bring the palms to your heart. Interlace your fingers, reach the palms forward and take a deep inhale, sweep your arms up high. Exhale, float the arms back down. Let's go in for a side stretch here. Let's anchor down the left hip, the left heel of the hand, the right arm floats overhead. Peel the right shoulder back, gazing up, take a deep inhale. And exhale as you float the right hand down. The heel of the right hand touches down your left arm overhead. Amplify the stretch for your left side. Take a deep inhale. And exhale as you float the left arm back down. Roll the shoulders up to your ears, peel them back down behind you and float them all the way down. Again, a rotation for your shoulders, exploring that full range of motion for your shoulders. One more full range of motion for your shoulders all the way up to your ears. Peel them back and float them down behind you. Okay, let's walk up onto hands and knees. You can stay here, you can move. Mm -hmm. Okay, hands and knees, and we're gonna move into <laughs> we're gonna move into cat cow. So your hands are below your shoulders, knees are below the hips. Let's inhale, arch the spine, and exhale, round your spine, drop the crown of the head. Inhale again, arch. Exhale as you round. Inhale again as you arch. Exhale as you round. Do a few more of those. The full movement of your spine, waking up into your core through cat cow. You are gonna move. Let's go. Can you go? Me some space. Okay. A few more. All right, let's move into our first downward facing dog. So we're going to curl the toes under, lift your sits bones high for downward facing dog. And when you're here, point your sits bones up high. Pointing the sits bones high, tucking your tailbone down long. Roll your shoulders out and up and away from your ears. So keep taking this pose. Some posture adjustments are always to roll the shoulders up and away from the ears, to tuck your tailbone down while you're lifting your sits bones high. Internally rotate your upper thighs, thinking about stamping your inner thighs on the wall behind you. Maybe your heels can get closer and closer to the mat. And place the space between your index finger and thumb firmly on the mat. And your gaze is up between your thighs. And we're gonna exhale as you slowly walk your feet closer toward you. Walk your feet all the way up the front of the mat. Walk your feet out to a hip distance and take your hands to your shins or your quads and reach forward through the crown of the head. Gaze is straight down at the floor, just reaching through the crown of the head. Bring your body back, body weight back into your toes. And then as you exhale, drop the crown of the head. Do that again. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, lifting up halfway. Exhale, Uttanasana. Drop the crown. 
Now sink your hips, take your arms out to the sides, engage your core, draw the navel in. Let's rise up on a deep inhale, let your palms touch above you, and exhale, mountain pose, Tadasana. So I mentioned we'll be going into your destination pose tonight of reclined bound angle, Supta Baddha Konasana. And we'll go through just two sun salutations, Surya Namaskar A, to warm up the body and to get ourselves feeling comfortable, um, comfortable enough to go into a good hip opener and an inner thigh stretch. So back to mountain pose, feet are hip distance and parallel. And we're gonna inhale, sweep the arms up, let your palms touch above you. Hinge at your hips and exhale into a forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. And exhale, step that right foot back. Here's your lunge pose. Okay, so lunge pose. Um, pretty common yoga pose, a great way to warm up the legs. Perhaps you have your blocks or books or boxes handy. So you could mirror or frame your left foot with your blocks. Um, this is optional. If this is more in the way than it is helping, just put the blocks off to the side. You don't need them necessarily. So here we are in the lunge pose. The work is in isometrically drawing your feet together. You want to have a lot of isometric contraction. You should feel your inner thighs pulling together. You should keep your body weight out of your hands and really let this work be done in your leg. Amplify the lift of that right leg, so that back leg, that back knee. Um, might be tempted to put a knee bend in there. It's actually gonna help you out and do a lot more work for you if you can keep that right leg super straight. And here we are in the front leg, the left leg, at a 90 degree angle. So this is low lunge. I'm sorry, this is lunge pose. We'll be going into low lunge a little bit later. Let's take a deep inhale and we're going to exhale. Plant both palms. Gracefully step your left foot back. Meet me in plank pose. Hover your heart forward. Engage your core as you tuck your elbows into your rib cage and lower all the way down with a lengthened spine, lengthened tailbone. And then come all the way down to the mat. Tops of your feet touch the mat. The knees are lifted off of the mat. We're gonna move into Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Hands are below your shoulders. Tops of your feet are actively pressing into the mat, but your knees are lifted. Shoulders peel back as you take a deep inhale. And exhale as you lower back down. Curl your toes under and lift up to your downward facing dog. Enjoy a breath in downward facing dog. Plant the left foot, inhale as the right leg high, and exhale as you step the right foot forward. If your right foot didn't land in the front of the mat, just toe heel it up there. Here we are again in your lunge pose. You have the option of using your blocks, if you like. Work on the foundation of this pose, feeling the right foot firmly planted into the mat. Feel that engagement of your inner thighs, kind of like you want to sweep your feet isometrically together on the mat. Keep your left knee or your back leg buoyantly lifted. Left knee is straight. Right knee a good, maybe 90 degrees, or maybe um, if you're using blocks, maybe a little bit more obtuse than 90 degrees. Try to square your hips. Try to tuck your tailbone here. Take a deep inhale. And let's exhale, plant both hands. Gracefully step that right foot back. Meet me in plank. Hover your heart forward, engage your core. Tuck your elbows down, tuck your elbows toward your rib cage and lower all the way down. All the way down to the mat, the tops, your feet touch the mat. <laughs> Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog.
Take a few breaths in Downward Facing Dog. And let's plant the right foot. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Step the right foot forward. Inhale, lift up. Halfway, this is your Ardha Uttanasana. The work is in lengthening through the crown of the head. You're pouring your body into your ball of the feet and toes. Exhale, drop the crown of the head. Sink into your hips. Take your arms out at your sides. Come back and standing. Let your palms touch above you. And exhale, Tadasana. So that was your Surya Namaskar A. Let's go through that just one more time, and then we'll move into a few more standing poses and some really awesome restorative poses. So let's take the Surya Namaskar A at full breathing, synchronized pace. So your feet are back to hip distance and parallel. We're gonna inhale, sweep the arms up high, let your palms touch. Exhale, engage your core and hinge at your hips, bow into a forward fold. Drop the crown, inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, step the right foot back. Here's your lunge pose. We're hanging out here for just a breath. Take a deep inhale. Let your palms touch the mat and exhale as you step your left foot back. You can keep it lifted if you want to and lower down through Chaturanga Dandasana. All the way down. Tops of your feet touch the mat. Shoulders peel back. Cobra, Bhujangasana. Deep inhale here. Exhale, downward facing dog. Curl the toes under. Use your core to lift up. Plant the left foot. Inhale, lift the right. Exhale, step the right foot forward. Lunge pose, opposite side. Inhale and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. You can keep that right leg lifted if you want to. Tops of your feet touch the mat. Deep inhale, Cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Plant the right foot, inhale, lift your left. Exhale as you step your left foot forward. Step the right foot forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, drop the crown, fold, forward fold. Sink in your hips, bend your knees. Come back to standing and take a deep inhale as your palms touch above you. Exhale, Tadasana. Mountain pose. So we're gonna move into goddess pose. So I will go into a side view. So standing on your mat just like this uh, with your um, one foot, my right foot is at the front of the mat, left at the back of the mat. And turn the toes out. And we're going to come into goddess pose. So you're bending into a comfortable knee bend. And we'll sweep the arms up high. And now let's inhale, take the bend out of the knees. And exhale, put the bend back in the knees and bend the elbows as well. All right, and then do that again. Inhale, lengthening both limbs. Exhale. Inhale, lengthening, star. Exhale, bending into elbows and knees. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale, stay here in your low goddess pose. And we're gonna windmill, windmill the arms. So let's drop the right arm, sweep the left arm overhead. And inhale back. Exhale to the other side. Inhale back. Exhale, alternating sides. Exhale, just warming up the legs. Let's do one more on each side. Dropping the right arm, left arm overhead. Inhale, return to goddess pose. And exhale to the other side. Inhale, return to goddess pose. Let's lift up. Okay, option to lift up onto toes. You try that and it's crazy. <laughs> Just drop your heels, no big deal. Let's come out of this pose and lengthen the legs, lengthen the arms. Exhale, back into goddess. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Option to keep the toes or the heels lifted rather. And let's exhale as you bow to the right. Inhale, windmill back to your goddess pose. 
Exhale to the left. Inhale, windmill back to goddess. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, back to goddess. You can drop your heels. Take your hands to your hips. And let's just pulse down, 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 down. Just waking up the quads. Keep pulsing. Maybe you have music playing. Maybe you're pulsing the beat of the music. And then let's just peel the knees back and just pressing back. Pulsing by pressing the knees back. Waking up the outer thighs. All right, come back to long legs. Pivot your back foot in. So that's my left foot. Pivot that back foot at a 45 degree angle and point the right foot or the front foot straight ahead. We're gonna move into a pyramid pose, Partha Tonasana. So you should have, um, I've got about three and a half feet between my feet. And you'll take your hands behind you, interlace your fingers, open your heart and then hinge at your hips, hinging to a comfortable forward fold. You're just hovering the heart over that front leg. You're pressing your right big toe or the front big toe into the mat so that you do not hyperextend that leg. If it's available or if it's more available to use blocks here, place your blocks out in front of you and feel free to bring your hands down to blocks. Pyramid pose for just another breath. If you're using blocks, put them aside. Put a tiny knee bend into that front leg and drop down to your left knee. So peel that, le or that left leg back, or left hip back rather, and you're lengthening the entire front leg, the front right leg. So we're inhaling into a modified pyramid pose. And again, blocks might come in handy here. If you're less um, available in that right leg, blocks can help you prop up. So you're keeping that right leg super straight. If this is feeling really easy, start to think about peeling that right hip back. Get an even deeper stretch. So let's move from, um, I promised you a low lunge. So let's go into that low lunge in just a breath here. Exhale first by bowing in to your front right leg. Then bend into that right knee for your Anjani Asana low lunge. And just wake up into that left tensor fascia stretch, left quadriceps stretch if it's available, and then lengthen that right leg or the front leg again into your modified pyramid. Inhale, low lunge on Jani Asana. If you wanted to, you could sweep the arms up high here. And exhale, back to Parsvatonasana, pyramid. If the bricks are not needed, don't feel you need to use. We'll do this just a couple, a couple more times. So Anjani Asana, inhale, sweeping the arms up if it feels comfortable. Exhaling into your modified Parsvatonasana. Inhaling as you rise and exhaling, floating the hands back down. Now let's gracefully bring the body back onto your left knee and step the right leg back, right knee, steps back or right next to the left, and you'll step your left foot forward. Curl the right toes under, come up into your standing Parsvatanasana, your standing pyramid pose. So peeling your shoulders back, opening your heart, take a deep inhale, and again positioning that right foot off to a 45 degree angle, you've got about two and a half, maybe three feet between your feet, depending on the length of your legs. Your left big toe presses firmly into the mat so that you can be sure not to hyperextend. You're gonna open your heart on a deep inhale, hinge at that left hip, and bow into a hovering forward, a hinge at your left leg. And again, hands can release down to blocks if you need them. Blocks can be up on, it, on your highest orientation. Take just a breath here, and then let's exhale. Bend into your left knee to drop the right knee down. 
We're gonna make that same pyramid pose, only modified. So here you're peeling your left hip back to enhance that stretch. Again, your blocks might be here for your, your assistance, hands, under, uh, hands on your blocks. And we're gonna exhale as you bow into pyramid. Inhale now, bend into your left knee for your low lunge pose. Exhale, bow into your pyramid. Inhale, perhaps your arms can rise for your Anjali Asana. Exhale, bowing into your forward fold, honoring that left leg. Inhale. Two more. Full inhale. Exhale, taking this pose or the sequence of movements to your level of comfort, to your variation. One final low lunge. Arms rise and exhale. We're going to move into child's pose. So again, planting the left hand on the inside of your left leg, gracefully stepping your left knee back. And let's have blocks and perhaps a few pillows handy. Uh, so if you just got maybe books, blocks, and lots of pillows, you could stack your blocks in a, in a pattern right like this with your, um, your blocks one on top of each other. I've got two pillows. Maybe you've got more. That's awesome if you do. And let's plant the pillows on top of the blocks. So just like you go into your child's pose, Balasana normally, um, let's have the knees out a little wider, out to maybe the, the width of the mat. Big toes can touch, and you can bow into your props. You almost want your knees right up close to your pillows, and you can exhale. And instead of moving forehead down to the mat, you just relax into your Balasana here. Uh, perhaps you have bigger couch cushion or right now I've got a bolster I'm going to show you how to do the same move on a bolster so I'm going to put maybe both maybe just one pillow on the bolster same thing here you want your knees to be right up with the, the beginning of that pillow and you'll go into child's pose balasana let's hang out here for 10 breaths so relaxing if, you, um, if you've chosen one side of your cheek to relax on, split your time up between five breaths. So maybe lifting the cheek and stretching the opposite side of the neck by dropping the opposite cheek on your pillow. And allow your eyes to close here. Let this balasana, modified, restorative balasana, be a continuation of your meditation. So you find yourself returning to your list of things to do or uh, any thoughts that populate into your mind, just be aware of those things that populate and let those go. Let this be a continuation of your meditation. With your exhale, Think back to that mantra that you chose and allow yourself to feel fully um, true to your mantra. We're coming out of this pose, coming up on two long arms. Put your props aside just for a just for a second here, and we're going to move into uh, we're going to move right into our destination pose. We're going to do three variations of this pose. So this is your bound angle pose, and have some space at the back of the mat. So I'm moving up to the foot of the mat, the very beginning of the mat, um, and we'll move into two variations of a reclined bound angle. So. Take your hands and cup them around your toes, peel your shoulders back, and lift the crown. We're gonna go into a forward fold variation. 
So exhale as you hinge at the hips and you can hang out here as long as you want. We're gonna keep moving, but if you're feeling pretty awesome here, you have those pillows and things handy, you can hit the pause button and this can become a very restorative forward fold. We're not going there today, but feel free to take this practice to your own, your own, your own level if you'd like to. So we're just giving ourselves the introduction of a forward fold here. And then we're going to inhale and lift back up. So now you can set your props behind you. Um, I'm, play, I'm putting a bolster behind me and I think I'm going to choose one pillow. You could do something similar, maybe two or three pillows if you don't have a bolster. Uh, maybe just a big fluffy blanket rolled up. Move your feet back into soles touching. This is our Supta Baddha Konasana. Um, one additional tip is that we can get a good heart opening, um, a good heart opening um, expression with this pose if we have some blocks handy. Maybe they're not blocks. Again, they could just be pillows or couch cushions, whatever you might have handy. So we're gonna recline over the pillow and bolster and relax elbows on pillows blocks are what I'm using right now, or anything that you have nearby. And let's close the eyes here. Let's stay in Supta Baddha Konasana for a few more breaths. Stay true to your mantra. Keep repeating that mantra on every exhale. Let's come out of the pose. Use your elbows and arms pressing down to come up out of the pose. And let's place, you can actually come out of the pose just a little bit. We're gonna take the bolster or blanket or pillow or whatever you're using and turn it perpendicular to how you just had it. So instead of lengthwise along your spine, now you're gonna offer yourself a back bend. So um, I don't need the blocks, but you can use the blocks for this pose if you'd like to. Um, so we're going to come back into your bound angles, so reconnect the soles of your feet. I've got about um, four or five inches between my low back, my sacrum, and the beginning of that bolster, but again, giant fluffy blanket, whatever you have at home is perfect, and you'll rec recline over that. This time your arms can connect, your palms, your hands can touch above you, and you can close your eyes. We're going to stay here in this variation of Supta Baddha Konasana for a few more breaths. Okay, let's move out of the pose. Use your arms pressing down to lift back up, a little engagement with your core. And let's take the props, potentially the same exact props that you're using, that you used for your bound angle, and move into Prasarita um, Hashimotanasana. So taking your legs out wide, a wide angle. Again, your pillows or bolster or blankets, or whatever, are right in front of you. Thinking about lengthening to the crown of the head and then exhaling to what feels like a comfortable forward fold and you should feel very relaxed over these blankets. So if that means using another pillow or a block or whatever you have at home, completely surrender to this pose. I always recommend just keeping the, the ankles engaged as you, as you get into the pose and then release the entire engagement of both legs as you float into this pose. So just melting into your blankets and pillows. You can rest your forehead or alternate between both sides of your face or your cheeks. Just do 
two more breaths. Let's come back up out of this pose. Walk your hands up. Take a drink of water. We're about to move into Shavasana. Take a drink of water, hydrate yourself, and we'll place props in a way to allow for a, a nice, relaxing Shavasana. So again, I'm going to use a bolster. You can go ahead and use pillows, whatever you have handy. Place them be below your knees. So in Shavasana, in your final relaxation pose, your feet are out wider than hip distance, and then you relax the outer heels. So you're taking the weight of the foot and placing it on the outer heel, so you're allowing your, your thighs to externally rotate and allowing your lumbar spine and lengthen of your thoracic and cervical spine to lay on the mat as well. And your arms lay open, palms open to the ceiling, shoulders melting into the mat, and you'll hang out here in Shavasana for um, as long as you like. Actually, hit pause on this video and stay in Shavasana with a clear mind, repeating your mantra to yourself over and over. And, um, and we'll reconvene for a quick namaste. So bring yourself down to your final relaxation pose. And once again, just clear your mind. Palms lay open to the ceiling. Scan your body just as you did in meditation as you prepared to meditate before your practice, you searched for things that were in the present moment of your body. Take that final scan of the present moment of your body. Letting go of any thoughts as they enter into your chitta vritti, as you witness yourself Engaging in thought, immediately let those things drift away. And with every exhale, you repeat your mantra. Shavasana for as long as you like, but as soon as you're ready to move out of Shavasana, you can put your props aside, or perhaps you can sit on a pillow or a blanket as long as you have them handy, and we'll come back to a comfortable sitting posture. Take a final moment, <clears throat> scan your body, and for one final time, repeat your mantra. Take a deep inhale, sweep the arms up, let your palms touch above you, and exhale as you bring your palms to your heart. And thank you so much for joining me for restorative meditation and yoga today. I look forward to seeing you again next week, so thank you so much for hitting play. And do tune in to Jules Felipe and her bar class um, tomorrow, as well as the high intensity training with Chris. Thank you again and keep moving at home and let me know how you like these videos in the comments below. Namaste.